welcome to this edition of Africa Today, which will focus on an ongoing diplomatic spat between Algeria and Morocco. We are asking, what is the source of tensions between the two powers of the Maghreb, and how can they solve their differences? In this edition, we shall also analyze the political situation in the Comoro Islands and the continued detention of the country's former president, Ahmed Abdallah Sambi. I am your presenter, Sheila Nelima. We also have news, and of course, we shall take a look at what you have sent us in our social media pages. Hope you enjoy the program. Morocco Algeria tensions. Algeria recently summoned Morocco's ambassador to Algiers in protest against a hostile remark allegedly made by a Moroccan diplomat. Tensions between the two neighboring countries rose mid May after the Moroccan consul in the Algerian city of Iran was seen in a viral video purportedly referred to Algeria as an enemy country. The Moroccan embassy in Algeria has branded as fabricated the alleged statement. The Moroccan diplomat at the center of a spat between Algiers and Rabat left Algeria at the country's request early June. While confirming that the diplomat had left the country, the spokesman of the Algerian presidency, Mohan Belayed, had this to say. وعلى كل حال هذا التصرف نتاعو لم يكن مستغربا لانه علمنا ان انه ضابط مخابرات عين ك كقنصل في 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 وهران لاسباب ربما اخرى على كل حال هذه صفحه طويت For more on this we have contacted Ali Bahaijoub a commentator on North African affairs thanks a lot Mr Bahaijoub is there a possibility of further escalation of tensions between the two countries after the Algerian military drill and Morocco's decision to build a new military base along the border? I think the, uh, that has been uh, sort of hyped. Uh, the, the, it's not actually a military base, it's just a barrack moving uh, some of the, the army uh, units into the frontier. Uh, so they are uh, in the in there at least uh, to be on alert if ever there was a problem. But I can't actually imagine uh, a military confrontation between Morocco and Algeria because both of them will be uh, losing out uh, because of the uh, the uh, the affinity between the two peoples of Morocco, Morocco and Algeria. The the people are. Uh, have a, a huge and deep uh, affinity and has been for a long, long time. Thanks a lot, Mr. Bahaijoub. Relations between Algeria and Morocco have been tensed for many years over the Western Sahara territory. Spain relinquished colonial control of the Western Sahara in 1975. Morocco and Mauritania then stepped in and claimed the territory as their own. Mauritania withdrew its claim to the territory, while Morocco, which controls most of the territory including its three main towns, insists it is an integral part of the kingdom while Algeria backs its independence. A Western Sahara journalist, Naza Al Khalidi, explains here some of the difficulties faced by the masses and activists in the territory controlled by Morocco. In the beginning of the program, Morocco invaded our country um, and invaded the people in Western Sahara. And the people of Western Sahara endured war and occupation, uh, even though there are very few people outside who have heard about uh, our suffering and our tragedy. The reason that Morocco is considered as, as, as a human rights defender and activists and journalists any as enemies so they're not going to just give us authorization to work and to to document what they are doing against the people in western sahara because they spend uh, many many years just hiding the real reality uh, from the world algeria backs the polisario front a secessionist movement demanding independence from morocco the Polisario's self-declared Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic is recognized by the African Union and many African countries, including Algeria and South Africa. 
In June 2018, President Brahim Ghali of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic was in Pretoria for talks with South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, who called for the end of Morocco's colonization of the territory. The suffering that the people of Sahrawi are going through now in refugee camps will be sufficient evidence that indeed this colonization should come to an end. Uh, because it is an affront to us as the people of Africa that we should in this day and age still have one country within the African continent that does not have self-determination, that is not independent. How has the Western Sahara issue contributed to the deep rivalry between Morocco and Algeria? Uh, it is the source of the problem, the source of the problem for the last 45 years. So much so that it, the only country where borders actually are closed is between Morocco and Algeria, and that's since 1994. And, and that is totally unacceptable to Moroccans and Algerians and to the Maghrebi population because that stopped even the Maghreb Union from even be implementing anything whatsoever. Let's have a look at our weekly news. Somalia has opened the first phase of the Berbera Corridor. The project is set to link Ethiopia's border town of Togochale to Berbera port in Somalia. Somaliland imports to Ethiopia has been estimated to be over 800 million US dollars annually. The project will increase the port capacity by 50%. Still on Somalia's development, a new photovoltaic solar power plant has been commissioned in Mogadishu. The aim is to reduce the cost of electricity through minimizing the import of fossil fuels for electricity production. Reduced costs have been achieved, opening up more discussions on expanding its capacity. Now on to technology. An e-commerce firm, RG Consult INC, has launched an online platform linking buyers and sellers to Kigali's Kimironko market. The shopping experience has now been made easy while people observe social distancing and use cashless transactions while going about their businesses. Now, Mozambique resumes its coastal shipping services. President Felipe Nusi inaugurated the new service in the Maputo port. The services come after a 30-year collapse. The operation has begun with two ships. However, incentives such as reduced costs and taxes have been introduced to encourage more investors and ship operators. Now, on to Nile Dam developments. Talks have resumed. Despite Sudan, Egypt, and Ethiopia expressing the desire to cooperate, the beginning talks have not yielded any fruit. They have been clouded by Sudan and Ethiopia's growing border dispute, and further, the Ethiopia's alleged defenseful approach. Now, trains wearing masks. You had that right. The tram company in Rabat, Morocco, have adorned their trains with masks. The idea is to encourage and remind people to put on masks as a measure to stop the spread of COVID-19. Let's have a look. A genius way to encourage the wearing of face masks in Morocco. The charms of Rabat are adorned with masks. The idea is to encourage and remind passengers that the wearing of masks remain mandatory. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Camaro's Crackdown The Indian Ocean archipelago of Comoros is rarely in the news, but now there is simmering discontent in this pristine country due to the authoritarian rule by a government cracking down on dissent. The Indian Ocean archipelago nation is made up of three main islands, namely Anjuan, 
Moheli, and Grande Comore. Former Camaro's president, Ahmad Abdullah Sambi, has been under house arrest for two years without charges. Sambi, who served as president from 2006 to 2011 and is the main opponent of current president Azali Asumani, has been held under house arrest since May 2018. Sambi was arrested after he was questioned over his role in a scheme to sell the country's citizenship that investigators say was riddled with corrupt practice. Sambi has denied the allegations against him, and in a recent letter to President Asumani, he reiterated his innocence. In a previous interview, Sambi also rejected the corruption allegations leveled against him. I don't know if they put all that money in a truck or a check in the bank. In any case, I declare before Comorians and the whole world that these are lies. If that were true, God would punish me on Judgment Day. I am not a prophet. I can make mistakes, but I've never stolen. Meanwhile, one of Sambi's lawyers, Mahamud Ahamada, says his client is concerned that justice will not be served and that the conditions of his detention are prison-like. In his discourse, the moment he arrived, he said this, I quote it. When he came back to Moroni, he gave a speech and said, I quote, I do not fear justice but I fear injustice. As of today, unfortunately, I haven't received any proof that he's committed any of the offences of which he's accused. For more on the political situation in the Comoro, we contacted Baba Aye, an African affairs political analyst. Thanks, Aye, for your time. Why has the government of Comoros continued to detain Abdullah Sambi without trial? There's no legitimate basis, if you ask me. Um, earlier in January, um, subsequent to outcry by his family and lawyers of his failing health, uh, there was supposed to have been some uh, order from the government for uh, Sambi to travel out for uh, treatment, but nothing has been affected. Um, the allegations of corruption. Under pressure from Saudi Arabia, Comoros cut diplomatic ties with Iran in 2016 and with Qatar in 2017. The government of President Asumani is accused by the opposition of pursuing a foreign policy based on personal interests and not the interests of the country. Are any foreign powers involved in the current persecution of Abdullah Sambi? Sambi's um, role in um, trying to establish relations beyond uh what had been traditional uh by governments in the in the uh, union of the comoros uh proved that problematic um for not opponents um, who are now in power but also for external uh, powers like france uh, and as well like saudi arabia uh, which felt uncomfortable uh, with the uh, rapprochement uh, uh, between um, Comoros on the Sambi and uh, Iran, for example. The current president of the Comoros, Azali Asumani, a former army officer, first came to power in a coup in 1999 and won elections in 2002 and 2016. In 2018, Comorans voted overwhelmingly in favor of controversial constitutional reforms that allowed Asumani to seek another term. There have been sporadic riots by people opposed to the changes, while the opposition says the country is moving toward absolute dictatorship. What is a dictatorship? It's the loss of our rights and liberties, individual and collective freedom freedom of peaceful assembly, freedom of speech. What we are seeing now is a tragic first for the Comoros Islands. It's true, some dictatorships are more brutal, but they all start like this. 
Asumani went ahead and contested presidential elections in March 2019, and as expected, he won't amid opposition cries of rigging and irregularities. Aimed at muzzling the population in order to go to the polls as provided for in the electoral code, we declare the current government headed by Colonel Azali illegitimate. President Asumani shrugged off rigging claims by the opposition. The autonomy of the three islands, Grand Comor and Juan and Moheli, which constitute the archipelago, has been considerably reduced after the reforms. The new turnaround in the electoral calendar were the main focus of the opposition's campaign for the presidential election. According to the opposition, Asumani's policy could reopen past wounds in reference to the cessation of the island of Ajuan between 1997 and 2000. In January and February this year, Comoros president Azali Asumani's party swept to victory in a parliamentary election boycotted by the opposition. The Convention for the Renewal of the Comoros CRC won 20 out of 24 legislative seats. Asumani has now consolidated his grip on power and while angering natives of the island of Anjouan who argue that it is their turn to hold the presidency. This is due to the fact that Comoros' presidency has traditionally rotated among leaders from the three main islands of the Indian Ocean archipelago. Now power is likely to remain on Grande Comore until 2029, a move that has further polarized the country. It's a spontaneous uprising of people who are fed up with what is happening. The inhabitants of Anjouan were expecting the president-elect in 2021 to come from their island and run the country for the following five years. President Azali Asumani engineered changes in the constitution and scrapped rotational presidency in the country. How will this impact on stability in Comoros? Because uh, the former military officer Azil really uh, wants to, with this, perpetuate himself in power. And um, already, when you also look at the results of the legislative elections uh, in, in, at the beginning of the year, uh, he's consolidating his power. So uh, there's likely going to be more instability uh, in the coming period. This would be within the elites, but you'll also most likely see mass anger spill out, especially with uh, the Comoros being swept into the economic crisis in the wake of the pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, the elites of the different factions are going to try to use poor working class people as cannot for them. Comoros has a long history of coups and mutinies. This archipelago that was colonized by France has undergone a series of coups and attempted coups since its unilateral declaration of independence in 1975. The presidency of Asumani has been ducked by incidents of instability, which some opposition members say are false flag operations meant to just clear down on opponents. Police in Comoros arrested 20 people who allegedly plotted to down the president's plane in a foiled assassination bid in April this year. At least three people were killed in a shootout at a military base in the capital in March last year. Meanwhile, in 2018, the prosecutor of the Republic of the Comoros accused eight people who were arrested of an attempted coup and wanting to commit a terrorist act. There were searches that resulted in seized materials, so-called seals. There are some banners. I read these banners. The banners were designed and manufactured to be used after shooting down the authorities and taking over power. They tried to use these to persuade opinions to adhere to their acts. Are these insecurity incidents signs of simmering disquiet in Comoros? Uh, well, yes, it does show disquiet. 
it does show uh, part of the deepening of conflictual relations we earlier spoke about. It does show armed horse trading uh, or power dealing within the ranks of uh, the, the elite and the military which serves their interest. Uh, it does not bode well for the country, uh, nor does it bode well for the poor marginalized masses of the Comoros. Uh, the president has uh, sown the the weed, the wind, and uh, is likely going to reap uh, uh, the whirlwind. The Comoros has been called the Perfume Islands for centuries due to its cultivation of the rare Yang Ilang essential oil. The Comoros have been the leader of the world ilang market for over 50 years now. Nicknamed the Flower Flowers, Ilang Ilang is a beautiful yellow flower sought for its essential oils by the greatest perfumers in the world. Each year, the Comoros produces about 40 tons of essential oils of this flower, especially in the islands of Anjouan and Moheli. As main source of income for many households, this production has harmful consequences for the environment. The future of the island remains bright, with reports of substantial gas and oil deposits. But a turbulent history of political upheaval and the President Asumani's controversial change to the Constitution in his favor has worsened hostilities in the archipelago. Thus, the future looks uncertain. What is the future of Comoros under the present leadership? Uh, the Comoros Islands, the level of uh, impoverishment, low level of education, and um, the largely an agrarian setting. Welcome back to this segment. We are going to look into your feedback in our social media platforms. On our coverage of Libya, our viewers had this to say. We had at Dogma Ken stating, got to knuckle down on this one. The authority here is a Kerry Blue Terrier. We just need to listen. On Africa's Great Lakes crisis, we had at Hugo Tana sharing a blog saying, multinationals and Western imperialists have profited from genocides in Central Africa. We also had at Daniel Akech Thiong stating, presidents and leaders of the Great Lakes, Horn, East Africa, and Sudan are the problem. It matters greatly what people say after their deaths. We also had at Ngiru Wonsanga stating, in Africa's Great Lakes region, we need sustainable peace and development. But is it possible to get there as long as those who are against it are still in power? That's all for now. Thank you for the feedback. Keep sending in your views and comments on the program. Tag us in your images and videos and we shall show them right here for you. And that brings us to the end of another edition of Africa Today, a program which gives an incisive analysis on news and events making headlines in Africa the rising continent. Thanks for staying tuned. Until next time, from me and my team, it's goodbye for now.